All right, now, Nigeria has been having energy supply challenges with about 86 million people unconnected to the national grid and lacking access to electricity. The sector has remained stagnant over time, with the government still paying subsidy of 70 billion now annually to keep the sector afloat despite privatization. Industry watchers post it that with the new act, that's the Electricity Act uh, that the president just signed last week, states cannot expand opportunities and play key roles in building power plants and complementing the federal government's efforts on the transmission expansion project while also curbing energy theft in the power industry. Now, the National President, National Union of Electricity Employees of Nigeria, NUEE, Martin Uzoegu, joins me now all the way from Geneva in Switzerland to discuss further. Good morning to you, Martins. Many thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It is indeed a pleasure. Let's start this by getting, uh, are you sharing your general overview about the recently signed act, uh, the Electricity Act of um, 2023? Yeah, um, thank you very much once again. Yeah, the act which was signed by uh, the former president, uh, the, uh, sorry, the president was the uh, was a replacement of the former act of 2005. And, and for us, I believe that uh, uh, such acts, um, looking at some of the indices that was uh, in that act, uh, definitely will go a long way to um, streamline and create a robust uh, framework for the implementation of the Electricity Sector Act, which it has now been signed in. Uh, but however, we equally be mindful uh, of the fact that even the previous act that was signed has uh, uh, some of the indices that could go a long way to streamline the industry. But because of the uh, non-implementation of the context of those acts uh, that created a lot of lacuna, in the electricity sectors, and it looks as if uh, the those who are manning the sectors doesn't uh, know what they are doing because they there is no political way to be able to implement such acts. So this particular act that was signed, uh, in as much as we we are welcoming it, but then it's not uh, uh, something that we should care about at mm -hmm. the moment until we continue to see uh, how the situation unfold. Okay. You know, um, considering uh, the post privatization because there are so many things that we proposed during the uh, stakeholders meeting uh, concerning the issues that has to do with power sector in terms of fully liberalization and commercialization of the sector, mm. especially the distribution angle. You know, uh, we believe that the 11 discos, which have been issued, shouldn't have been sold, you know, should have been um, reviewed and let the government take responsibility. And furthermore, split those discos because it's in Cobrans for just one investor to be in charge of how many states. You know, one discos will be in charge of five states. And it makes it so difficult for them to work mm. because many of them doesn't have any uh, funds to, you know, uh, make sure that this discourse perform very well. Okay. And after, after six, seven years of privatization, we expected that government should have equally reviewed. So unbundle uh, them again. Yeah. So, so Martin, the question right now would be, uh, because industry watchers are saying that with the new act, states can now expand opportunities and play key roles in building power plants and complement that of the federal government's effort to uh, expand um, transmission and all of that. But you are saying that uh, after all this while of uh, you know, privatization, the discos are not really managing it well. But don't you think that with the new acts are giving powers now to the states that um, would see like an unbundling of the distribution um, system uh, in power in Nigeria? Yeah, what, what the ad what the ad did was to give uh, to extend power to the state government to be able to uh, generate expand the distribution angle okay. and giving them license to operate 
uh, both the generation and the distribution angle, mm. uh, whether in the mini grid system, uh, any investors who have the capacity to be able to generate as low as uh, less than you know uh, one megawatts, you know, had that opportunity, which was not there in the first act. Mm. Uh, but at the end of the day, what we are looking at is the capacity to be able to do that. Do they have the capacity? Do the state governments, uh, the investors? Who have been, you know, you know, getting to have this ad, you know, being a sign. Do they have the capacity to, you know, finance it? Because most times you see them. There's ads that was very laudable. We appreciate, and at the end of the day, um, we welcome it. But the implementation is the problem, and that is, you know, what has been going on in the power sector. You know, the governors up to now, many of them can't even pay that two thousand naira minimum wage. And at what point we then not have the capacity to finance, you know, such projects? Yes, we agree that it's good, it's, it has really expanded the scope in terms of renewable energies. For me, that is the best area that I really appreciated that the government has really done well because it has now given the opportunity that people should now harness that area where renewable energies can be, you know, used in the generation of electricity and probably distribute it to the consumers. But at the end of the day, what matters is the consumers, how are they going to benefit from this? Because if they don't fund it and there is no fund towards the uh, distribution aspect of mm. the industry, then it, it, everything will not go back to square one. All so right. for us, we mm. believe that it has expanded the scope okay. and we believe that it will enable uh, the, um, the investors to get closer to the consumers and equally enable the consumers to reap from it, especially when there are uh, supplies increasing generation. All right. But at the end of the day, we are also looking at the capacity of those who wants to come in into this investment. And let it not be that what is ha what has happened before. Oh, and when people, repeat people, itself. people have the capacity to buy those uh, uh, distribu oh. distribution and generating companies. And up to now, we are still hovering about 4,000 megawatts. Okay, I, I was gonna, which, which leads to my next question right now, uh, Martin. It's good you've mentioned the issue of our capacity and that of implementation, because one would wonder if um, the private sector would come into play, because uh, or maybe international partnership, uh, we had issues even with the Siemens deal. But let's just leave that aside for one minute and uh, uh, face the next thing. Now, 47% of Nigerians do not have access to grid electricity, estimated at around $28 billion, which is equivalent to 2% of uh, GDP. Now, getting access to electricity ranks as one of the major constraints for the private sector, according to the 2020 uh, business, uh, Doing Business Report. With this new development, do you think uh, these issues of um, consistent um, power grid collapses will be nipped in the board? And you also talked about renewable energy. So do you think that Nigerians will begin to appreciate that aspect and maybe explore the opportunities abounding it? Yes, I, I, I really uh, I believe that Nigeria should really explore that aspect of uh, electricity generation and distribution, which is uh, involving the renewable energy sources. Mm. And that will really help us to expand uh, the, the industry. But for me and uh, for us, we believe that um, a lot of things has happened in the power sector that you cannot and we no longer trust those who are even coming, even though sometimes we give them the benefit of that. But the issue is that who are these people that are coming in to man this? Are they Nigerians? If they are Nigerians, where are they getting their funds? Are they borrowing from the banks? Or do they have foreign direct investment? You know, and we wouldn't want to subject ourselves in a situation where we will uh, be able to you know, give them that benefit of that because it has happened before. We thought that those who came to, you know, invest in the directors and the distribution sectors have foreign direct investment. They have the technical knowledge. They have the managerial ability. But uh, we realize that some of these things we are not there, and Nigerians we are deceived. So, but this particular act definitely has created more opportunities for people to go into renewable energy. Fine and good, if we, for, if we have foreign investment that will bring in foreign direct investment into this, a very foreign direct fund into this, then definitely 
Nigerians will continue to uh, believe that there will be an improvement, especially in the area of distribution. Uh, we are the, you know, Nigerians will have access to electricity. And, and those things could be a mini grid uh, system. It may not be the one that could be tied to the national grid. Okay. But if you subject it in a way that uh, government should hands off completely, then I think we are not getting it on. So government has business in business, and government continue to fund it. But my concern is that the people who knows what they are doing be in charge of this sector, you know, and, and for them to drive it and have the political will to take decisions. Yes, the power has equally given the uh, National Assembly, uh, I know, uh, the act has given National Assembly the power to over, you know, to do their oversight function, and not explicitly to the Minister of Power. Now, it's a welcome development, because they can now work, you know, side by side, you know, with the Minister of Power, and especially in the area of the state uh, uh, energy sector. And that brings into the issue of the regulatory framework. Mm. Then the neck. Who should be the habit of, you know, in charge of the regulatory aspect of this? Should the poly, you know, you know, work to ensure that the framework which of, of, of which the, the act has been enacted must be exercised and implemented. And this is not a time to be dozer. This is time for them to really work if they actually want to get this thing right. So I believe that if they're able to do that, and mm. those who want to invest in this have the capacity, have the funds, have the technical abilities, the workers are there. It will even create more employment. Okay. Because if the energy sector is expanded, both in a renewable, both at the state level and the local government, then it will enable them to create, create more employment. I, I, I was even going to chip in um, on that. So you talked about um, creation of employment and opportunities. The arrival. I was going to ask you that because with this new development, uh, there's a lot of um, value addition in the value chain that could be explored in terms of metering, in terms of uh, maybe solar panel and all of that. Can you just tell us about other opportunities that are derivable from this new act? Yes, there are other opportunities. In fact, you are aware that Nigeria has been burning a lot of uh, gas and flaring of gases. Gas flaring, and those yeah. gases can be converted into... Uh, you know, generation of energy. And that is another aspect which uh, we also be looking into. Uh, that is another opportunity. And once it's been done, we are talking about CNG, com uh, compressed natural gas. You know, uh, some of these things can equally be, uh, you know, harnessed from there so that you can also use it in terms of, uh, 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 you know, fueling the vehicles. You know, now we are talking about converting vehicles into the uh, by using natural gas because of the increase in the uh, petrol price. Petrol, yeah. So, definitely going to have a runway because the micro economy and some of the uh, uh, the industries that could equally help the artisans to work in fabrications and all of that things. So, some of these panels don't may not even need to be in imported abroad mm. because people here can now start developing it and designing some of the materials that's going to be used. So that the, instead of importing some of these materials that will you know, add increase uh, to the cost of the electricity uh, prices, mm. then some of these materials can be developed mm. here and fabricated here in Nigeria. So it's, it's something that needs to be worked. And that's why I mentioned the regulatory agencies uh, should be able to uh, sit up and do their job uh, this right. time around. Now that the act has been, uh, you know, uh, signed into law. All right, they, thank um, you, Martin. Uh, national assemblies should equally, you know, play a vital role, especially in the terms of oversight, oversight, oversight functions. Mm. And so that those who are coming to run these industries are those who have the capacity, are those who have the All technical right. ability, are those who have the finance, you know, to be able to do that. All and right. that will equally help to improve the industry. All right, but thank you so do, much. So we should allow it this way. Uh, I doubt if uh, the people that are coming in may have the uh, requisite uh, uh, properties to do that. All right. Uh, we must say a very big thank you to you, uh, Martin. We are actually out of time. But uh, uh, the insights that you have um, provided on the show is actually very, very wonderful. And we do appreciate all of them. Uh, I have been speaking with the uh, president, the national president of NUEE. That's the National Union of Electricity Employees. And we've been looking at the Electricity Act of 2023. Many thanks once again, Martin Uzaigu. Thank you very much for having me. It is indeed a pleasure. And that's the size of the show for today. I'll leave you with details of this feature on tackling unemployment. And I'll see you again tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadonye. Bye for now.
The nation's higher educational institutions equip graduates with hard skills while neglecting the development of employability skills, which are core for transitioning into the labor market as well as for workplace productivity.